right, I want to show you my little Twitter maker application that I created. So I'm in my applications folder. Let's go down to it. I call it TweetMaker, and I used ActionScript mainly to perform it. So I'll just give you a little tour, double click to open it up. Let's get started. The first thing that it's going to do is find a an Excel document I called Tweet Picker. And I use this Excel document to keep track of all the different tweets for all the different events that uh, we have and I use. And you see it just opened up. The second thing it's going to do is open up Safari and we're going to log into an application called Buffer App. So it goes in there and then it goes over to the username and password, types it in, types in the password, signs in. With Buffer App, this allows me to add each tweet and assign a time to it, and it'll automatically log in. So then it'll go back to the Excel spreadsheet, and it'll go over to here, and it will sort these in a random order. So that's what that did. Then it'll go over to this column, and it's going to choose between one of the tweets from there, copy it, go back over to here, and paste it. And it looks like I got a little error on that, but that's okay. It'll go over there and to add buffer and adds it to the buffer. Once it's done, take a look at the top and uh, I use growl to tell me which tweet has been added. So the next one goes and gets that one, adds on to it, moves the cursor down to the add to buffer, clicks it, and that one's added to that. That will launch at 9 o'clock. And it's going to go back and forth between Excel and Safari, copying and pasting it into the line, moving the mouse over to the Add button, clicking it after a few seconds, and then adding it to there. A couple of times on here I had to add some breaks in it so that it doesn't work too quickly. If it works too quickly then it doesn't give time for either Excel or for Safari to catch up on uh, with what it's doing and before it moves on to the next uh, next set of instructions in the program. So I have to tell it to pause for a couple of seconds, pause for a half a second just to make sure that everything will run smoothly like you normally would when you would be using these programs anyway. And it's going to go through it about ten times. The best thing about Buffer is, well, we're using the, the free version of Buffer so it only allows us to add ten tweets per day which is perfect because I can do one a day from eight o'clock till five o'clock. Uh, which you can see in the right hand side of the buffer that's um, those are the times that they'll go out usually at the top of every hour clicks add to buffer and goes back to here mm, there we go come on alright you can see that it's uh, got different colors different colors just kinda helps me keep track of the different tweets that we've typed in for every uh, event that's going on. I try to type four different tweets to choose from and the column that it's copying from it picks uh, one of the, the four in a random way for that day each time. The next column over is just a random number that I can assign to it that will sort them all in a um, you know just a, a random number and so when I sort it in a descending way it will randomize which event is chosen therefore each day a new event will be chosen rather than all the events every day being tweeted at the same time. Uh, right now there's about 20 events that to choose from so not every event is going to be chosen I even have some uh, just dummy events, uh, just generic events like, hey, check out our podcast, or hey, uh, read the Sunday School, or here's one for our podcast that we're doing this week. And those are, if, when it goes back to the Excel spreadsheet, you'll see are put in gray. Since they are just generic ones, I actually uh, kind of, it, it's a random number, but it's weighted more towards the bottom, therefore it's less likely to be used. All right, now that 10 tweets are done, it closes out the document, but it doesn't save it. And it also hides Safari. And so now I can go back into here and just kind of look and see, well, all right, everything looks good. I see that I had a little error and it picked up the wrong thing for 8 o'clock, but that's cool. So I'm going to, you know, I don't want, that's the last thing that I typed in a previous program. So I'm going to delete this one. And is that okay? That's okay. I really like it. It'll shift everything else back up. So now since I have an extra tweet open, what I like to do is go to, let's say, one of our Baptist colleges. And they usually have a news feed. And just kind of click on one of them, like um, 
yeah, Mississippi College is on April the 9th is going to have college night at the Mississippi Braves. So I'll go here and I'll just paste that into there. And we'll get the link to that as well. Another great thing about the Buffer app is as soon as I type in a, uh, a link to this web page it's already assigned to our bitly account since our bitly account <coughs> has a, uh, a special code to it we can link it up and we can monitor and track all of the uh, links that people are clicking on and who's going to where with it uh, another thing I can do with the buffer app is I can rearrange what times they're going to be done so if I wanted that Mississippi College thing to go at 12 we can do that uh, let's even bump up our podcast um, this week we're doing an Easter podcast, so I'm going to edit this one. Instead of saying find our weekly podcast on iTunes, let's say um, this week we are having a special Easter week podcast. Oops, P-O-D-C-A. Find us on iTunes. And they'll link to there. Save changes and it adds that one to there as well. So again, great little application. I use Buffer app. We can go to our Twitter account. Everything that you see on Twitter as far as the Mississippi Baptist go, it will add every hour to it so I don't have to log into Twitter at all. I don't have to keep everything up. Uh, if I ever need to change my tweets, here's that tweet picker Excel spreadsheet. Let me open it up and give you just a detailed view of it. So again, this is the name of the event in this column. I have the date that will end, so um, I know I don't want to tweet after May 15th. I just type up four different tweets, uh, and one for each color, and then in this column it will randomly choose one, and I use this column to sort them, either ascending or descending, and it will randomize the whole thing and um, just give you a random event will be brought to the top from there. And these, whoop, going down too far, these down in red are the just generic ones like we're promoting stewardship, promoting one of Dr. Futrell's articles, here's the podcast, the lead story, those things like that. Looks like I have one, um, yeah, ministry assistant. Notice that it says out of date. That's because April 2nd was a ways back. If any of these uh, do become out of date, I see that it's turned red. I can just highlight it and we'll go down and delete it and we'll save the page from there so I kinda just keep them up uh, in order to add to there we look into the uh, the Baptist record on housetops each week or we also do the e-light any information that they can give us is what we put up into here alrighty then I'm gonna sign off and thank you much